Right, listen up. Before I start today's video, just want to note something. We've got our heated oil. Woohoo! The downside is because the heater fans are on, it makes the audio sound like shit. But you have to put up a bit because I'm not going to work in the goddamn cold. We're nice and warm in here, so I don't care about the fans being on, missing the audio. Right, let's get on with it. Right then, we're going to get the clutch done this week, but before I go ahead, there's a few things I want to clear up first and a few corrections I need to make. First up, these discs, okay. <coughs> Someone actually left a comment that these lines were on the wrong way round, which in case the discs were on the wrong way round. And do you know what? You get on Google and you start looking at information and there is so much conflicted information out there. But I've come to the conclusion now I forget his name, I should have got his name, but I forgot it, but anyway, he was right. These should face forward, these arrows should face forward, despite the fact that these grooves don't actually really do much, but they are actually really supposed to expel brake dust. It's the discs that have actually got the drillings in them that matter to dissipate the heat. But also, when you look at the direction of these discs go, the airflow goes through here. These are more or less like flat, if you know what I mean. If they were sort of like dotted around at an angle, the airflow would be kind of sucked into them. These are not like that. So I don't think it would really matter which way around you put these. But we did find a picture showing that these are going forward. So that's the way we're going to put them on now. That's point number one. So there you go. Ta-ra! Here's the next problem. The passenger front brake caliper that I'm having all the trouble with, where the Brady brake hose screws in and butts up against the casing of the caliper. I got some unions delivered here. Unfortunately, they were too short, so they weren't going to work. I've now come to the decision, well actually, Dan has messaged me as well. It's come to the decision, all we're going to do, we're going to grind this caliper down. It's probably the safest option actually, it can't do no harm. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, the caliper will go in the bin and he will source another caliper. If it does work, freaking great. Right, let's get it done. So I've taken the bleed nipple out and the hose out. This surface here, I'm gonna grind that down, probably one or two millimeters. And if the brake hose goes in and the nut doesn't touch the casing, brilliant. I was originally going to use the angle grinder on this, but I've got a better idea. Safety first. Actually, I've got a better idea. <laughs> what do you reckon? I'll tell you what though, when you go shopping, if you want a bit more street cred than this, I hear they're selling welding masks in Lidl. See if the goddamn hose fits in now. Let's get this bit of rag out. <laughs> I use proper cloth rather than tissue, so I didn't want anything actually getting stuck in there, if you know what I mean. This is it. Right. Let's get this. Oh, it's well, it started on the threads, so that's something. That is actually finger tight now. Nip it up with a spanner. It's looking promising. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We're tight. Fantastic. Now, now we've got a proper gap all the way around there. Now that's tightened up. I know it's sealed inside here. So I guess the big test is to bolt this back on the car and make sure it don't leak. Right, Woo. let's get this caliper back on. There, slot that 
right goes into there. Bit of old brake cleaner. Clean up all the brake fluid. Because when I check this for leaks later, I don't want any brake fluid laying around. And I'll pop this securing clip back in place. There. And put some silicon spray on that bloody grommet there because they're pretty tough getting in this bracket. It doesn't want to just push in the fingers. Right, I pumped that pedal about six or seven times now. Actually, I'm going to pull this hose off. There. Nice drip coming out. I shall clamp this bleed nipple back up, give the pedal a few pumps and see if we've got any leaks. Right, I have bled the brakes, I have pumped the pedal with all my might and there is no leaks, that's as dry as a bone. Yeah! <laughs> well, at least the brakes are doing better than these bloody dog shit gloves. Yeah! So today I'm going to try and get this gearbox out. <laughs> I'm just hoping I'm not going to get too many problems along the way. I'm a little bit concerned about getting the subframe off because sometimes the bolts can seize up in the chassis and you have to cut the chassis open and I don't want that to happen. I've actually sprayed some oil in the chassis where the bolt threads are overnight so I might be lucky. The other thing is, well, I'll tell you something, years ago we used to have a fleet of these taxis here, well, Mondeo uh, Mark 3s, they were the 2 litre TDIs. I used to change bloody clutches and flywheels all the flipping time. This gearbox is a little bit different, it's on a V6, but I guess it's, it's similar. So I'm going to sort of like give you an overview of getting the gearbox out and uh, hope it all goes well. The reason we're taking it out in the first place is because we believe it's got quite a bad oil leak. And we believe it's the rear main oil seal. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I guess we'll find out when we get the gearbox out. Anyway, the first thing is get this bloody exhaust off. We, I've got the exhaust off already, but I'm going to show you. Because I tell you something, you wouldn't want to take an exhaust off one of these cars on your driveway. It's, it's lucky we've got a proper ramp here. So I've taken the whole exhaust off in one great big lump. It's not too difficult getting these out. You've got like 15mm nuts on these spring clamps. And as soon as you loosen them, you can kind of wriggle these. And they, they actually wriggled off okay. They weren't too bad. And there's a few brackets holding the exhaust on. But I didn't want to separate the actual flanges here. Three of these nuts look like they'd possibly undo. One of them is pretty well rotten, this one here. So I thought I'd just leave these alone and just drop the whole bloody lot off in one hit. One thing I will say, where the exhaust slides off this uh, cat here, it really butts up against this subframe. So you've got to kind of try and wriggle it out. It's a bit tight there. Underneath the bonnet, obviously you've got your air cleaner box to take out. The one thing to watch out for is there are a number of air pipes on this and uh, breather pipes. <laughs> you just got to, you just got to be careful what you're undoing. Airflow meter wiring. But obviously, you remove your engine top cover and your battery and battery tray has to come out. Where these gear cables sit in the bracket on top of the gearbox, there's like two little clips where my thumb fingers are, and you just press them clips in and you slide them up. But also. One of them has got like a popper joint, you've got to be careful, you need something like a two prong thing underneath here to pop it up. And the other one has got like a, it's like a little ball joint, you press the tab in at the end, where is it there? Yeah it does that, and that releases it, but it was still pretty tight getting off, I had to spray that with some freeing oil. I've actually removed the bracket, two 10mm bolts to hold them gear cables on, because there's a 13mm bolt that holds the bloody gearbox uh, bell housing to the engine which I couldn't get to. So there's not a whole lot going on up here. I've actually, there's a little spring clip you pull out and then you can disconnect your clutch pipe that goes onto the slave cylinder. Uh, yeah, there was, there's another two 13mm bolts that hold the bell housing. They're underneath like this thermostat housing, uh, <laughs> water housing. They're a bit, you can't really see them, you've got to go by feel. They're not very nice. But yeah, you've just got to be careful. There's like wiring connectors for Lambert sensor which are cl clipped onto the gearbox. So you've just got to take your time. I'm going to get this starter motor off. I've just disconnected a 10mm and a 13mm nut. And that wiring 
can actually come off. And now I'm just going to unbolt the starter, which is only like two 13mm bolts, I think, 12 or 13mm bolts, and then this whole motor can just slide straight off. I'm just trying to take this starter motor out. Uh, where's my torch? Just there. I've, there's, once the two bolts are out, uh, there's two dowels holding it on. I've just cracked it, like loosened the dowels, and oh my god, there's bloody oil all pissing out of the starter motor or out of the bell housing. See there? It's actually on the floor. Look at that. <laughs> Oh my god, this has got one hell of an oil leak somewhere. That is bloody pissing out. Jeez, it's dripping. Oh, actually, I'm going to pull this starter motor out now. The amount of oil that's just come out of this starter motor, I reckon that's getting flung in there from behind the flywheel. Because I thought initially it was coming from the top. This is the top of the starter motor up here. And on top of the starter motor, there is some residual oil higher up but I would have thought that would have been absolutely covered in bloody oil. The amount this is leaking, because every time I pop this car up, there's a puddle of oil underneath it from the rear main, from what we think. But there's actually nothing on top of that starter motor. Now looking above that starter motor hole, there would have to be a one serious amount of oil up there to be dripping down <laughs> to actually do that. So. I'm actually still thinking it is the main leak is actually behind the gearbox, behind the flywheel. I've looked up here and there's 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 nothing that's like 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 running down that I can see. Yeah. There's only sort of like residual oil around here. It's all pretty pretty much is what you'd expect. Before I put this car back up in the air, I just remembered you've got to pin these radiators up. Uh, that, that'll hold the radiator from falling out when I take the subframe off. I don't think this car's ever been apart before. These are the, the bottom ball joint bolts. They've still got like the Loctite on them. I can tell you something, I'm going to clean this up and that Loctite's coming off and there'll, there'll be some grease going back on them. Right, this is it. Subframe bolts. <coughs> Will they undo is the big question. Yeah! Fucking hell, man! I tell you what, that wasn't half as bad as what I thought it would be. We're not out in the woods yet. There's the front ones to do. Yeah! Ooh! Ooh! Oh my god! That's coming out like a little lovely. Well, <laughs> that's some good news. I was worried about them. I've, I've actually undone all four bolts now on this subframe, about, I don't know, half a dozen threads. So the frame's come down to the little bit, because I need to get to the steering rack bolts, which are a bit of a sod. I'm going to have to get to them through the wheel arch. So uh, I'm going to unbolt the steering rack, so I'm going to leave that hanging. And hopefully I can drop this frame straight off. You see them steering rack bolts in there? One either side. They're pretty hard to get to, but if you can get a long bar in there and undo them, once they're cracked undone, then you're fine, then you can whiz them out your fingers. I'll tell you what, them ball joints took some hammering to get them out. See the radiator's got pins on it which just fit into these grommets so it just slides out. 15mm bolt comes out, that holds your like rear gearbox mount. There's a tin plate that sits just here, stop too much heat getting onto the steering rack. There's only like a few 10 mils, and you leave the tin plate on the car. Bingo! Oh. Them drive shafts were really bloody tight in them hubs. Flipping it. I'll tell you what, we loosened them with a hammer, 
and then drove them through the air chisel. Woo! In case you didn't know, the driver's side drive shaft, once it's actually out of the hub, you actually tap that of a hammer and that will slide off them splines there because the drive shaft's in two pieces. Then you've got two 13mm nuts and that, this other end will just literally pull straight out of the gearbox. And this tin shield that sort of like stops the rack from getting too hot. <coughs> I'll just pull this out of the way for the minute. I'll put that back before I put the subframe back in. Right, there's a gearbox bolt right up by the back cat. It come out, it undone okay. It came out a little bit and then it went tight. I worked it backwards and forwards and oh, finally it's, it seems to have freed off. And now I've had to use a half inch bar to to ratchet it out but it's, it's actually coming out okay now luckily that has taken out a couple of the threads out of the gearbox casing because it's so bloody corroded in i think what i'll do is i'll clean it all up well i'll try and run a tap through the casing and put this bolt back in with some uh, copper grease or something there is a bolt right <laughs> in the way the, the front catalytic converter is right in the way of this bolt so I've undone it so far, well, what I'm going to have to do now is pull the gearbox out a little bit before I can get the rest of the threads out. It's either that or take the cat right off and uh, I don't particularly want to take the cat off. <laughs> I'll tell you something, this is hard going. There's a, this bolt that I had trouble getting out, that was tight, there's a dowel there as well. Flipping heck. <laughs> See where I've actually been prizing it. This was absolutely welded in there. It took me about 20 minutes to get that dowel free. But anyway, the gearbox is ready to come out now. So that's my last bolt out. It's all free now. Bingo! There. <laughs> it's uh it's a little bit oily in here. <laughs> oh that's 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 noisy as well. That's not good. We're gonna change this anyway. You know I didn't hear any noise on the actual flywheel rattling. I mean there's a bit of uh play in it but I don't know it, it feels okay. Let's get this clutch off and uh see how badly it's worn. I know one thing, it's all kind of like tacky. <laughs> it's not soaked in oil, but it's just tacky. Whoa! Right then, I'll tell you one thing, this clutch plate is almost, it's almost worn out. So I think this was a very good point to actually replace it. I mean, it's not on the rivets, but really close. Yep, I think we can safely say, that definitely needs changing. Now our dual mass flywheel, uh, there's a whole row of 15 mil bolts holding that on. So I'm gonna bang these bolts out and then we can have a good look at our remain oil seal. Yeah, actually, this side looks okay. This is the side. Oh, we've got oil. <laughs> we've got engine oil. It's a bit wet here. Looks like this flywheel's been, do you know what I reckon? The rear main's leaking. It's been spraying oil out with this flywheel and that's why it's built up in the starter motor. Yeah, I reckon that's pretty conclusive. There's a, there's a nice little puddle of oil at the bottom of this seal. So uh, I'll hook this seal out. And actually, I wonder if this plate would come off stuck tight in that bloody dowel there. Yeah, get that out of the way.
there we go. That's got it. Bingo. Yeah. Do you know what? I would actually say that seal, it's it feels like brittle. It's not brittle brittle, but do you know what? It doesn't feel good. It feels like the rubber's gone hard. And that's, that's why it's just leaking past here like a sieve. Anyway, we'll get our new seal and pop that in. And hopefully that will cure our, well, this, is, this was the main oil leak on the car. So hopefully the new seal is gonna cure it. Oh, it's warming up in here. I will get the release bearing out of the gearbox. There's only three eight mil bolts and that's off. So that's, that's no problem. I'm going to make a phone call now because now I've got the gearbox out, believe it or not, I've got to change the water pump and the thermostat and there's also a little auxiliary belt which drives the water pump off the camshaft pulley, which is a lot easier to do with a gearbox out. So I think the belt, there's no tensioner on this little belt, so I'm going to see if it's a stretch belt, I don't know, I'm going to find out now. I mean, if it is, but I'm going to order a new belt anyway for the water pump. And then I'm going to drain the coolant, get the water pump off and get the thermostat out. Right, our thermostat is right there and our water pump is right there. <laughs> Apparently that's not a stretchy belt that goes on it and there's no tensioner either for that auxiliary belt. So I'll work that one out in a bit. But what I'm going to do, there's a pipe that comes off the bottom of the water pump, which is this one here. I'm going to disconnect that pipe there into a bowl and drain all the coolant out first. There we go. <laughs> I've just unbolted this water pump. Beware, all the screws are different lengths, so you need to know which holes they go back in. Also, the little, they look like 8mm bolts that go in here, but they're not, they're actually 3 eighths of an inch. But anyway, that belt that's got no tensioner on it, that, now I've unbolted the whole pump, that belt will just come off. The original water pump come with like a metal crush gasket, whereas this one, it's just got like a cardboard gasket. So I'll put some uh, gasket seal on it, and now I'll, yeah, I'll bolt this back on. Well, that's our water pump back in place. I will say that belt, uh, once the pump was off, the whole housing's a little bit on the loose side, it floats about a bit, so you can actually put the belt on and then just slide the water pump back into place and bolt it up. It, it was quite easy, actually. I'm just gonna change this thermostat. Uh, <laughs> these bolts, three eighths of an inch again. Let's get that out. There. Right, let's hook this out. Here we go. There. There we go. One thermostat. You see that little pin there? That's called a jiggle pin. That's to let the air out. That will sit at the top. But anyway, you put the uh, put the seal on it, and we'll pop this in one thermostat fitted yeah I do have to say this old thermostat the actual, all the rubber in there is all like bloomed and when I come round to the back half it was all split like that so that was well worth changing I shouldn't think that was really doing anything I bet the heater in that car was crap it'll be good now Fifty percent antifreeze. I'm actually going to put the water in now while the gearbox is still out. Reason being, if I've messed something up and it's leaking, I'll see it dripping and I can rectify it. I just want to point something out here. This seal here is out of a Mark V Mondeo. 
The problem with this seal, it comes, well, it's not a problem, but it comes with an applicator to actually fit it. And these seals, you've got to get them in right because you can mess these easily. You see they're flat, and when you put that applicator on and you squeeze them in, it's like you've got to push that seal in. There's no, there's no spring in these. You've got to be really careful fitting them. Now the seal we're fitting to this ST, luckily, this is just a standard oil seal that you'd, you'd fit, you'd expect to see in any car. It's just a rubber seal, a hard metal outer casing, and there's a spring in there. There's like a, a spring all the way round. So if I push this piece of rubber in, it will just spring back. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a very slight smear of silicon grease around the ring, and I'm just going to put this seal in, and hopefully everything will go fine. Looking at this crankshaft journal where the seal sits, there's a tiny, tiny little groove. I mean, the seal can actually cut into this, and I've seen some really bad cases on some high mileage cars, but this is like an absolute minimal. So I think we're quite safe to pop the seal back in. I'll possibly put the seal sort of like just a fraction out so it's not actually sitting in exactly the same place as the old one. You know, of all the seals I've fitted all these years, I don't really care, I just put them in. This one, at £36 a seal, I, <laughs> I, I am a little bit concerned. Uh, I need to get my hand out of the way to try and put this in, but I've got a little bit of plastic uh, that will slide there, and I can pop the inner bit of the seal onto the journal without damaging it, hopefully. There, that's it. Now, I've got a little plastic mallet here. I'll get this. So I don't, I don't have nothing to, <laughs> to put on this big to actually knock it in all the way around squarely. But uh, we'll get this in bit by bit until I get it flush with the actual casing. Bingo! I'm going to put a bit of brake cleaner in here. Get rid of some of this bloody oil that's been left lying around. Right, that's all nice and clean now. So uh, hopefully we won't have no more oil leaks in the back end here. Ah! I guess I can put some brake cleaner on this plate and give this a clean up. I have given these dowels a clean up with some emery cloth and put a bit of copper grease on them. And that should fit on. Oh. Alright, come on. It's a flipping good thing the gearbox input seal isn't leaking. I'll tell you what though, this gearbox casing, it certainly needs a lot of brake cleaner in here to clean all this shit up. Well, it's not pretty in here, but at least it's not covered in splodge. This bolt hole at the back of the bell housing, I had the trouble getting the bolt out. A few of the threads have come out of it. I'm going to uh, run a tap through it. Actually, I'll put some spraying oil in there and stick my tap in there and see if I can make the thread a little bit better. Right, let's get this. Uh, I'll wind that backwards and forwards. I can feel a little bit of resistance there, but not a great deal. I think it was a lot of it was the actual corrosion on the bolt, which took the threads out. They've probably never been out before. At least this should clean the threads enough. I'll get this right out now. Funny thing is, it's, <laughs> it's actually quite loose. It's coming out finger tight. There. Here's the bolt that I took out of that bloody bell housing hole. You see the threads have been taken out and they're still on the bolt. The funny thing is on a 15 plate Mondeo we just done a clutch and uh, the bolt behind the DPF, the one we normally take out and fling in the bin because it's a pain in the arse to put back in, it's, 
it's the same bolt. So this one can go in the bin, and this one will go back in the bloody, in this ST. The only thing I'm going to do, before I put this, this bolt back in, I'm going to put a <laughs> I'm going to put a little bit of copper ease on it. Not too much though, but just so it doesn't seize up again anytime soon. Well, I've just ran this bolt all the way through that thread and it's gone in absolutely lovely. Excellent. <laughs> At least there won't be no trouble putting that back together. There. Take my hand! You see the state of that? That glove is straight out of the box. This is what I'm trying to say. The PPE has gone right downhill since the start of this pandemic. In fact, if you want to get a face mask, you're probably, out, you're probably best off buying a pack of nappies. Hi, Matt. Hi. <laughs> Andy. Hi, man. <laughs> what are you up to? Yeah. Fitting bulbs again on the taxi. Okay, my favourite. You're boring, see ya. Anyway, do you know what? I, I, I can't get. <laughs> I, I can't stop laughing about this glove. I think it looks good. It looks great. Uh, that's as far as I can go with this Mondeo now. So I reckon. Well, I've got no clutch, I've got no flywheel. They're all in the post apparently, so I've got to wait for them. That'll be next week now, and I'll carry on putting it back together when the other bits arrive. And when it's all back together, we're gonna go for a bloody road test, a road test and a half. Anyway, who can I annoy now? Right. Well, there ain't no one to annoy, so you know what we've got to do now at the end of this video? We've got to go up the car sales and we've got to say hello to Mrs. Monica because a video wouldn't be a video without Mrs. Monica in it. So, got my rucksack because I'm walking. Right. Flipping weather's good. Hmm, that's interesting. That was the NHS just text me. One minute. They've just arranged an appointment for me to have a flu jab. I didn't even ask them for it. What I don't seem to understand is, Nobody's actually had the flu this year, so I think I'll give it a miss. I'll stick to being a right-wing conspiracy theorist. Still not at that price. How's it going, Miss M? It's going great. Right, Molly, it's Saturday afternoon. Yeah! Before I go home, I just thought I'd come up here and give you a quick little update on the ST220. I know it's been about six months it's been sitting on the ramp down there, but I'm waiting for parts. It'll be done next week, I swear to God. When it's done, I'm gonna come up here and we're gonna go for a drive. I need your bum on that driver's seat so we can go for a ride in it. But, because it's Christmas, I'm kind of thinking either a Mrs. Santa suit or an elf suit. I think, I, I think the viewers would love to see something like that. What do you reckon? Yeah, whatever. Go for it. I'm just going to have to measure you up first, if you wouldn't mind standing up. So I, I wouldn't want to get a suit that's sort of like miles too big, would I now? Right, got 
the measurements. So who wants to see Miss M in either a Santa suit, a Mrs. Santa suit, or an elf suit? Cast your votes. Right, that's it then, that's the deal. Christmas outfix it is. I'm off home. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. See ya. And don't forget to like, subscribe and comment.